Thus, Derek Mackay, the SNP Finance Secretary, resigned from his job and dropped from the SNP for grooming a 16-year-old boy. Now, the attitude the SNP would like us to have with that is just it was just bad luck. These things happen. It can't be helped. But it's over now. We can just move on. It's not a reflection on the SNP in any way. But not so fast. Let's just look at the context a little bit. Let's look at Derek Mackay himself. He was married for 12 years, two children, and he abandoned his family in 2013. This is what he said about it. Uh, when I did fall in love with someone who I met at university, I wanted it to work, and it did work. I've got two wonderful kids, a result of that genuine true love and marriage. So, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It was only in later years that I thought, I think I need to fix this, because clearly I'm gay. So he says he's had this loving relationship with his wife, but now this needs to be fixed because he's gay. I would ask the question, what's changed here? I mean, did this suddenly come on him out of the blue? Did he play some part on it? Was it, I don't know, pornography? Were there some sort of sexual encounters involved? I've no idea. But he regards this as something that has to be pursued. He needs to fix his happy marriage that he's had with his wife and family. And his idea of fixing it is going off uh, to the boyfriend. Anyway, so of his marriage, he said, while this has been able to work, it's probably not right and won't last forever. So that was difficult. Well, wrong, Mr. Mackay. Being in that marriage and respecting your marriage vows was the right thing, and it could have lasted forever. It could have lasted forever. If that's what you'd have set your mind to and devoted yourself to, surely it is possible that that could have lasted forever. I mean, listen to this quote from him. Mackay says it was the Scottish Parliament debate over same-sex marriages that triggered his decision to split from his wife. How about that then? So here in Derek Mackay, we've got someone who made solemn marriage vows and then dishonoured them. He didn't keep the promises. He shown a lack of integrity. What he should have done, if he was being troubled or tempted or whatever by sort of homosexual feelings, he should have tried to overcome those or to ignore them, to not act on them. Maybe he could have sought counselling in order to diminish those feelings. But that sort of counselling would be illegal if the SNP had its way. It was in the manifesto at the last election. So the general opinion in politics these days is the character that people show in their private lives is not relevant to their career. So if someone shows that they can't keep promises and they're not to be trusted, that doesn't have any bearing at all whether they're suitable for high office. If I was the First Minister, I would have looked at Derek Mackay's private life, the lack of integrity there, and I would have thought he is not someone to put in a prominent position, to say the least. Just to clarify there, I'm not talking about all divorcees there. Obviously, there are lots of situations where people get divorced. But in this case in particular, it's pretty clear cut. He showed a lack of integrity, and that matters. Now, there have been plenty of other cases in the SNP where MPs, MSPs have shown themselves to be cheats and liars in their private life, but that seems to be no impediment to their career at all. And of course, it's not just the SNP. I mean, look at the, the Prime Minister, but that's a, a different topic. Now, what else about Derek Mackay? It was obviously known within the SNP that he had a problem with drinking and with behaving inappropriately in various ways as a result of that. That was known. It's reported that that had been discussed by the leadership of the SNP. Um, it appears that he was instructed by Nicola Sturgeon not to drink alcohol at the party conference in order to avoid problems. Now, I don't know what that, those problems might have been. One can imagine. So I think this is indicating a serious flaw in this man's character. And again, if I was running the SNP, if I was the leader, the first minister, I would look at someone like that, someone you're having to say, you know, back off the drink because of the way it makes you behave at our party conferences. That's not the person you promote to one of the most senior positions in the government. And if you do, and things go wrong, well, in a sense, it's your own fault, isn't it? Then a uh, story comes out from another man who was pursued by Derek Mackay. This is a 21-year-old heterosexual married SNP activist. And Derek Mackay sent him messages inviting him to stay over at his place. And worse, asking him if he's got any naughty pics of himself. So basically inviting him to send sexual photographs to himself. Now, the SNP activist who got that message, he would know that that message would be enough to totally finish the career of Derek Mackay. He would know that. 
but he decided not to publicize it. He decided not to complain even within the SNP. Why did he do that? Is loyalty to the SNP so fierce and all consuming that people can't break ranks even in the event of something like that? That obviously should be of huge concern. I think the indications are that within the SNP, loyalty often comes before pretty well anything else. But that person should have said he should have complained either publicly or within the SNP. And the fact that he didn't, I think, is blameworthy because he's left other people vulnerable to Derek Mackay's advances, including this schoolboy. Now, with the SNP, of course, we'll think of Alex Salmond. I mean, it was well known, it's been publicly reported for many years during Alex Salmond's time as First Minister that he had affairs with various women. Again, which demonstrates that he's a cheat and a liar. So the SNP know that he's a cheat and a liar, but again, that's no impediment to your career in the SNP. But still with the SNP. So when it came out that it was about to be reported that Derek Mackay had sent this 270 messages to a 16-year-old boy, what was the SNP's response? It was to get their lawyers on the case and try and stop the reporting. In other words, first response, this is a PR issue. It's not a moral issue, it's a PR issue. And again, that just shows the mindset and when that's the attitude in a party, when the morality comes second, the PR comes first, that's how problems like this can fester and not be addressed until it comes to something like this. Well, let's look at this next. This, here's a painting of Nicola Sturgeon. It's called Naughty Nicola, with Nicola Sturgeon sort of dressed like a dominatrix with a whip there, you can see. I don't know about you, I mean, I associate that sort of thing with like either prostitution or some sort of CD clubs. But this picture was commissioned by Nicola Sturgeon's husband. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon said she was tickled by it, she liked it, and apparently it hangs in their house. Right, if you're a, a married man, here's a question for you. Would you consider commissioning such a painting for your wife? Okay, if you're a wife, how would you feel if your husband brought home a painting of you like that? and said, let's hang this up in the house for our visitors, etc., to see. What would you think? I'd imagine most of you would be thinking, certainly not, that's pretty distasteful. It's not reflecting a healthy attitude to sexuality. Whereas Nicola Sturgeon and Peter Murrell, they can't see what's wrong with it. They can't see what's wrong with that perverted form of sexuality that involves domination, pain, etc. For them, it's just sort of a bit funny. So you've really got to question their values and judgment. Then you look at the SNP in action, look at their sex education program, which involves at one point promoting bondage. And you think, you know, where does that come from? It comes from the top. So when the people at the top of the SNP, when they hear people like me saying, there's something wrong with this sex education, you shouldn't be promoting bondage. That's not a healthy form of sexuality. What they're really thinking is, yes, it is. What's the problem? Because that's something they're happy to, to make light of and associate themselves with. So if Nicola Sturgeon had a better understanding of what's right and wrong, she'd have raised the alarm with Alex Salmond at an earlier stage, that might have been the end of him, and Derek Mackay would not have been in that position. But Nicola Sturgeon and those at the top of the SNP, they hate social conservatism, they hate traditional values, they've got no time at all for Judeo-Christian traditional values. But you see, these parties, if they reject the truth, then they've got to live with the consequences. We need deep, deep change in Scottish politics. And we're here in the Scottish Family Party to bring that about. So if you'd like to support us in that project, do join the party. There's a link below. Uh, thanks for watching.